Welcome to another episode of Matt Talk. We bring various experts to discuss current and important topics to benefit our audience. This is our eighth episode during current public health crisis and pandemic with COVID-19. As we are trying to ease the restrictions and open up the economy, many questions are still unanswered and there are a lot of confusion and uncertainty. There will be new normal post COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of questions regarding new normal for public gatherings, especially summer is upon us in few weeks to see how the air and road travel means for us and how the restaurants, bars, and the theaters will look like in upcoming months. Today, we have a special guest, Anita Pollard Grant, to discuss an important but not much like topic, which is end of life, final arrangements and ceremonies. No one wants to talk about dying and especially to plan for it. However, it is a bitter truth that we all will not be living forever and we need to be prepared to have some arrangements done at some point in our life. As we know that only in the last three to four months, millions died unexpectedly due to COVID-19 pandemic and many die due to natural causes or accidents every single year. They may or may not have any plans and unfortunately, even if they had plans, some may not have been implemented due to some circumstances. However, in normal scenarios, we all should have some plans for the finance, healthcare proxy, wills, if we pass this away, but final arrangements is the topic we are here to discuss today. So before we start, I would like to give a brief introduction of our guest today. Anita Pollard Grant is a registered nurse and a licensed mortician, also an active duty commissioned officer in one of our nation's uniform services. Anita received her BSN from the Medical Uni University of South Car California, Master of Science in Psychiatry, nursing degree from the University of Maryland Graduate School of Nursing, and mortuary science degree from the University of District of Columbia. She has her own firm called Grand Enterprises, which specializes in education and training for crisis intervention teams, funeral service practitioners, healthcare clinicians, mental health first aid, and ministry leadership. So let's welcome Anita Pollard Grant to our MAD talk. Welcome, Anita. Thank you so much, Dr. Patel. So uh, I'll start with uh, a question. What are some of the important facts and unfortunate myths related to final arrangements? Thank you. So I have a few of those uh, facts and hope to dispel some myths about uh, final arrangements. So the first point that I would like to share is with regard to power of attorney. So we know that many individuals have POAs in place. Um, they can range from the generic POA to a durable power of attorney to a springing power of attorney. And often as funeral service professionals, we have individuals who come into our uh, funeral homes with those documents. Unfortunately, power of attorneys are not in effect after death. Those legal documents are only identified and um, uh, in effect prior to uh, the individual's uh, death. The second point that I would like to um, share is that embalming is not required by law. Um, again, that is um, a misnomer, that's uh, a myth that exists uh, in some uh, parts of society. Now, there are conditions when, because of public health risk, um, embalming may be um, something that's discussed with you by your funeral service professional, but um, in general, it is not a requirement by law. The second um, myth that, um, that I often see is the thought that the government will pay for my final arrangements if I or my estate um, is unable to do so. And um, again, that is a myth. 
um, the expectation as um, adults or, or individuals is that uh, we will take care of those arrangements ourselves or that our final estate will do so. Now, I will share that there is a Social Security lump sum benefit that exists. And if you are um, qualified and eligible for that, that is an amount of $255. So it's 2020, and we know that doesn't go very far in terms of arrangements, but that may be um, um, a fund that's available. In some states, there is a medical um, a Medicaid assistment, assistance for funeral arrangements. And again, that's on a state or county basis. So that may be available. And we certainly know for those individuals who have served in the uniformed services of our country, that there may be assistance for those individuals. But aside from that, um, there is no, no general fund that the government has available to uh, provide final arrangements. Um, the other uh, thing that I would like to share is with regard to um, cost and shopping around. So most of us know, you know, there are big box stores, there are certainly online vendors, and we are savvy consumers. We go, we read reviews. Um, I would say that's a wise thing to do, even when you are pre-planning or, or um, uh, anticipating uh, putting plans in place prior to your death or those uh, of the of individuals that you care for, um, but you get what you pay for, like with any commodity. And so uh, less expensive or cheaper is not equivalent to quality. So please keep that in mind. Um, another point that I would like to share is that you have a right to know all cost. Um, we are a highly regulated industry, the funeral service industry is, and um, with regard to cost, we're regulated by the Federal Trade Commission and the funeral rule, which was established originally in 1984, says that we must inform consumers of all costs in terms mm. of their funeral services. And the final point that I would like to make under the facts in this is that um, in terms of organ and full body donation, organ donation takes place in the healthcare facility. Um, that does not uh, take place in the funeral home. And if you are desiring to do a full body donation, I highly encourage you to make those arrangements now uh, so that that legal paperwork is in place. Um, individuals that have full body donation typically are um, brought into the care of that hospital research center um, uh, directly from the place of death. So they would in most cases, never come into the care of a funeral home. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that factual information. So yes. can you define what is pre-need arrangements and what are some of the advantages of pre-need arrangements? Absolutely. So pre-need arrangements are, in essence, what it sounds like. In advance of needing those arrangements, um, in advance of the actual death, um, individuals put plans and payment uh, in place with their choice of um, funeral homes or crematories. Um, in, in making those arrangements, um, it, it's my thought and um, most of my colleagues in the industry think that it allows individuals to be very thoughtful about um, what they desire at the time of death. It um, is in essence a gift to your family because you have removed the business part of um, final arrangements from the, the grieving and the celebration of your life. And so it allows you to determine what will happen at, your, um, at the point of death and it allows you to be an integral part of those decisions. In a lot of cases, it also saves your estate a significant amount of money mm -hmm. because when you decide to pre-need and pre-fund in advance of your death, you are able to contract those services at um, the cost that it would be currently as opposed to the cost of those future arrangements. And so it really is a gift to, um, to those that are left to celebrate your life and to share in your memories. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that I um, encourage individuals to think about and really consider 
um, when they are, are looking to pre-need is to go ahead and research your neighborhood funeral home. Um, speak with those individuals who are part of your houses of worship, who are in some of your social groups, um, who uh, you trust and whose opinion you respect to find out if they have had uh, a need in the past to make arrangements, who they would recommend. Um, it is very much um, a referral sort of industry. And so instead of just Googling, a, you know, in your zip code, I think that if you have those that you trust and um, who will provide their opinions, I think that that's great. And then you can always go on and read reviews on the, the sites themselves. Um, you should also consider your will. Um, again, we've previously talked about the power of attorney and the fact that that has um, no bearing on anything that has to be done legally after the point of death. So please consider, um, first of all, do you have a will in place? It's very important that you have those legal documents in place. Um, your executor or executrix of your will will um, be able to follow through on all that you desire in terms of the distribution of your estate, but also if that person is the person that works with your legal next of kin, or if they're one in the same, uh, they will be able to follow through legally without any sort of delay and without any court or probate court involvement. Um, and if you decide to prearrange or to pre-need, I would encourage you to take someone with you um, to that conference so that they can um, have an ear for you. Sometimes it's a very emotional, even if it's done in advance, it's still very emotional because you're anticipating whether it's an acute situation or a chronic situation or yours, your life um, that you're planning for. Um, it's still an emotional transaction. So bring someone with you. And also please remember that in most parts of the country, the um, the funeral home has uh, that contract, but the cemetery, or, or if you decide to inter or to use um, a mausoleum or columbarium for your um, cremated remains, that is a separate contract. So many people don't understand that it's two different uh, business transactions. And then feel free to ask questions. Um, we're very sensitive as, as funeral service professionals to the fact that this isn't something that people do, you know, every day, thankfully, or it may not be something that you've ever had to be a part of a conversation. So if you have questions, um, we are very much open to those questions. So please feel free to ask questions of us. Um, we welcome. So, <clears throat> so Anita, you, you recommend pre-need arrangement conference or meeting? Yes. Uh, is, that, is that your recommendation? Yes, okay. absolutely. And, and your recommendation for individuals uh, who never plan anything, has have no clue of what is this all about. What is your recommendation for them? Yeah, you say will, what else can yes. they do? Absolutely, Dr. Patel. So again, make sure your will is in place. Um, make sure it's updated. Um, again, you know, life has many changes and swift transitions. And so sometimes we put a will in place at the beginning, let's say at the beginning of um, a marriage and the beneficiaries may change. The marital status may change. It's very important to go back uh, periodically. One thing that I do that I think works well is I just put a reminder like on my calendar so that in the next uh, calendar year, you're going back, you're pulling out those documents and you're reading through to make sure that it's still accurate, that it still reflects uh, the distribution of your property or your state, but that the persons who are a part of that decision, that your executor or executrix, i.e. the person that's gonna follow through, still is of competent mind, and that's still someone that you trust to follow through with those, um, those uh, arrangements or those desires. It's also important that you uh, be mindful of any changes in uh, your state law that might um, affect any sort of decisions that you've put in place. Um, where are those documents um, kept? Um, sometimes at the, at the point of death, people don't know where to look for those legal yes. documents. And so 
if you have um, you know, a place in your home that those are stored in, any sort of lockbox or safe, um, hopefully a fireproof safe, um, do you have those documents at your attorney's office as well? And would someone know who those persons are? So those are just some of the things that you would want to be mindful of. And who are you sharing copies with? So absolutely the executor, executrix would need a copy. But whom else? And do the persons in your life who are closest to you know where to find those documents? And then the other thing that I would say is to know where any of your insurance paper, paperwork um, is uh, placed. You know, it's, it's again, it's going to be an emotional time, no doubt, but it does not have to be disorganized. And so as much as you can anticipate the need for persons to know where those documents are and to inform them and be consistent in, in, in any of those changes. You need to loop back and tell those individuals. So those are some of the things that I would suggest um, when you're thinking about pre-planning because all those different legal documents will certainly come into play mm -hmm. at that time. Thank, thank you for that wonderful uh, information and tips for those uh, people who uh, don't have any information on this. Uh, so Anita, can you identify five things to best prepare for the final arrangement conference meeting at your local funeral home? I know for some, this is like a, uh, what are you talking about kind of a talk, right. but I think this, this is a reality. I think we all need to be prepared. And I think uh, uh, by, uh, I'm also learning myself that uh, what needs to be done. So can you share some light on those uh, areas as well? Absolutely. So I'll start with defining the final arrangement conference. So again, if it's at the point of death, this is the meeting that you will have sometimes in the funeral home with your um, funeral director or licensed mortician, or in some cases, and in most parts of the country, if you prefer, those professionals will meet you at your home. So it is, it is that transaction of paperwork and consent form signage, and um, that is done with the legal next of kin or the person that has been identified in the legal documents by the decedent prior to their death as the person that they would like to follow through. If it's in a pre-need um, setting, this arrangement conference is of course happening prior to the person's death because you're putting all of this paperwork in place. So in terms of the paperwork or forms or readiness for this conversation, the first thing that I would suggest is that the, the um, individuals who are attending this conference ensure that they have the decedent's social security number that is required um, in the documents that will be filed for the official certified death certificate. So you will need to bring that. You will need to know the decedent's legal full name, first and last name, the decedent's father's first and last name, the decedent's mother's maiden name, uh, their legal address um, must be listed, and also their um, occupation. And sometimes, you know, individuals are like, well, what does that have to do with anything? But mm -hmm. remember, this is going to the Department of Health. And so they're looking at cause of death and uh, employment or occupation. So they're trying to see if we think about, you know, occupational safety, health administration. So they're trying to see if there's any linkage between the person's occupation and that, and that legal uh, cause of death. And so that's, that, that's some of the information that I would suggest that they bring. The other thing is that um, a lot of times families will ask, well, I'm, you know, I have a lot of anxiety, about this meeting because I don't want to necessarily see my loved one that day. So I just want to kind of um, dispel that myth in, in this, um, under this topic because unless uh, the individual is having a direct cremation or a direct burial, meaning there is no memorial service, there are no plans to do um, a funeral service, um, you do not have to anticipate seeing your loved one the day of that arrangement conference. That will be a few days later um, when you come in for your first family viewing. And so you don't have to worry about that at that time. Um, again, it is a business transaction, so you will need to bring in some sort of payment uh, for that service um, or those services. So most uh, funeral homes will accept a credit card. 
um, as, a, as a payment method, cash, cashier's check or, or certified bank check. Um, of course, if you have an insurance assignment and you have that paperwork with you, that is also um, uh, acceptable in most, uh, most funeral homes. Um, I will say here that um, estates that are not settled, um, like an estate assignment, is typically not accepted. And so you will need to ensure that you have some other method of payment. Um, keep in mind that if you're using an insurance assignment, there is going to be an additional cost, either a one price that the funeral home has set or anything from three to five percent from the insurance company mm -hmm. because you are in essence asking them to finalize that insurance benefit, issue a check directly to the funeral home and issue a check to the, the beneficiaries within like a five day turnaround. And because of that, most of those insurance companies are tacking on an additional three to five percent on the total bill cost. And so that can run into the hundreds or thousands of dollars, depending on what your total funeral arrangement cost is. And so I encourage families to think a little differently if you have money that you can otherwise use and wait the, you know, the normal length of time for that insurance to be settled, then that might save the estate um, some money. And then the other thing that I wanted to share or would like to share is if the individual, the decedent is um, a veteran, so they've served in one of the seven uniformed services, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, um, the Commission Corps of the United States Public Health Service, or the Commission Corps of the National Oceanic Atmospheric Agency, um, please bring their DD-214. So that is kind of that official discharge paperwork. Um, that's very, very important because um, that will be, I use the term kind of the passport to be able to uh, access any of those uh, death benefits that are, um, that are through the Department of Veterans Affairs. And so that is required uh, for us to be able to do like the, uh, to get the flag, the U.S. flag presidential um, certificate, um, access to any of the 142 um, cemeteries around the country that are either state or uh, federally run uh, veteran cemeteries. And so you will need to identify that. So again, when we talked earlier about having and knowing where your will is, knowing where your insurance paperwork um, is located in your home or with your attorney. I, I say to all veterans, please know where that DD-214 is. It's very challenging to get an additional copy um, from the Department of Veterans Affairs at the time of death. We just need that uh, sooner than having to wait for that to come in the mail or be faxed or, or emailed to you. So if you um, don't know where DD-214 is now, and you have something other than a, than a, um, you have a, a honorable discharge, uh, please make sure you get that um, form so that you can file that with the rest of your, your paperwork. Okay, <clears throat> very nice. One wonderful information, Anita. Uh, so what are some of the steps for those who are considering something now or in the future? Uh, people like me, let's say, I, I want to be prepared uh, in yes. case if something happens to me or, or someone, some loved ones. What are my options? What, what steps do I need to take uh, in order to prepare myself? Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Patel. So I would say, and I encourage you know my own family to do this, is just to start with a conversation. Um, right now, as you said in your opening statement, most of us are still being very mindful of, you know, how much we're going out and about. And, um, and so most of us are with the persons who are going to be uh, following through on, on our desires when it comes to our final arrangements. So it's a perfect time to have those conversations with our family now to say at the at the time of my death i've given some thought and this is these are some of my desires so i would say first have that conversation with your your next of kin to kind of express do you desire you know earth burial or do you desire crema cremation do you desire green 
um, service? Do you desire, you know, all of those things? Because there are so many choices um, in terms of final arrangements. Um, just to have that conversation and then to do some research again as to what funeral home or crematory you would like to, um, to uh, work with to follow through. Um, right now, unfortunately, because of COVID-19, you can't just like walk in the door okay. and sit down with them. But we are all open to having that phone call. And, you know, just like you and I are having this conversation now, we're savvy enough with technology to do yes. virtual conversations. Um, and most of us have all of our merchandise and choices where you can kind of log into secured uh, websites and see uh, all of the different options that are available. So I would say just go, go ahead and make those um, virtual appointments and, and hear uh, from them what those options are like and um, do your own research, of course. Reach out to friends, um, speak with your houses of worship. A lot of ministers and faith leaders have a lot of experience and there may be considerations that you would want to speak with them about if that is a concern, um, research certified celebrants, they are a great option for individuals who don't, who want a humanistic service that is free of any sort of religious connotation. And so those individuals are certainly able to facilitate that service for you. And so just do some of those, uh, you know, outreach and research and conversations are so, so very important. Very good. So any departing comments, take home message for our viewers, Anita, uh, that information you provided, value, valuable information and, and very useful to our viewers. Any, any departing comments? Yes. Um, again, thank you for allowing me to come on. I would just encourage your audience to, um, um, to do something in terms of final arrangements. I mean, doing nothing is actually doing something. And it's not a wise decision. I know, it, as you said, it's not something that most of us think about, um, but it is a conversation and decisions that have to be made. And so how much more um, ideal is it that you are part of that, that decision as opposed to leaving all of that to your loved ones? And so to be able to get everything planned and to just have it um, in a safe place um, with those that you trust uh, to follow through and those professionals who will be there to follow through on those desires is putting your family and yourself in the ideal place. So I just encourage everyone to give some thought to that and to just start planning. I mean, set some you know things on your calendar so you don't forget, you don't let it pass by, but uh, that you will move in the direction of having those plans in place. Thank you so much, Anita, for your time and expertise in providing some valuable, valuable information on final arrangements. Appreciate your time to come on Matt Talk via virtually uh, for the interview. Uh, I appreciate your uh, time and efforts, and I wish you all the best in serving and staying healthy as well, and wish you all the best. Thank you. The same to you Thank and the you. same to your audience. Thank you again. Thank you.